Hi everyone, today is a very special day. We have Juliana Gomez. So honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor and uh, we we uh, since a few months ago my husband mm -hmm. one day we saw, we saw you um preaching at church yeah. and we were like we when we you finished we were like oh my gosh uh, <laughs> Carlos told me you have to invite her to share her story because it was yeah. amazing uh, yeah. and we were like oh we want to preach like her we want to know how to do it <laughs> <laughs> so it was amazing and thank um uh, thank you so much for coming yeah. thank you for so much for uh, accepting the invite and yeah we're so um happy that you're here thank you so thank juliana you. gomez is um <laughs> she's a worship leader at our church yeah. she grew up at our church yes. christ fellowship um she's a very um special special uh girl um she's going in two weeks to mexico yes um, two weeks so tell us about it julie yeah um i'm so excited and thank you for having me here and um seeing me but honestly it's been the lord that has been orchestrating our meeting yes. here and so thank you for watching also um But yeah, so I'm be leaving in two weeks. I leave the 27th with uh, two other friends and we're leaving with my dog. So <laughs> it's oh going to be a whole adventure. We're driving to a ranch in Mexico and I will be there for a year and two months. Um, by the time that I graduate my bachelor's is the day that I'm going to be moving back home. Oh, wow. And so... Um, It's really what I'm going to be doing there is helping the kids, um, being like some type of support system for them. So like a house mom, uh, you know, someone that can help them, but also be focusing more on the teaching aspect because my degree in global education is to mm -hmm. teach kids with disabilities, but also um, socially and academically trying to support them as much as possible. So my oh, wow. goal and my task while I'm there is to help them and give them new tools for them to succeed in everything that we're doing. And so my friends that are going to be traveling with us, uh, Julian and Samira, which are phenomenal people. I love them. Oh, they're them. going back? Yes, so they're going go back. Oh um, and I'll be driving with them and That's my dog. Funny. And my dog's name is Coda. He's the love of my <laughs> life. I love Your him. Your baby. Death, my baby. The person that's on my Instagram. If you follow me, you know who Coda is. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, so we'll be traveling and we'll be staying at a couple of different types of hotels and getting there, um, I believe, that Saturday. Wow. How many hours is yeah. from here to? It's about 32 hours. 32 hours? Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, we're crossing from Florida to Texas and then to Mexico. Um, also, Louisiana. I forgot about that. But <laughs> oh, wow. But yes. Wow. That's so. a very amazing experience. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, wait, uh, Julie, tell us. Uh, I remember one day when you were, one of the days that we saw you preaching. Yeah. We were at the, at the church and mm -hmm. you were preaching. You were um, preaching uh, that day. I remember you talk about um, that you, your story about that you had cancer or leukemia yeah. when you re were a baby. Yeah. So, tell us more about that. Yeah. So, when I It was about 2003. Uh, I was about to turn three years old, and that tells you how old I am. Um, <laughs> I am 21 years old, if you were wondering. And um, you're single, right? Yeah, I am single. <laughs> not ready to mingle, but um, one day I will be. Uh, that was a, not ready to mingle. Oh, not that's, ready to mingle. <laughs> I'm focusing on my goals, and then the Lord will open the doors. Oh, yes. That's a prayer in itself. Uh, hallelujah. Um, anyways. <laughs> um, So, yes, I was diagnosed at the age of almost three uh, with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And so uh, basically what it is, it's that it's cancer in the blood. And when my mom finally detected it and saw the change in me, it was that I was getting tired as a two-year-old, mm. uh, getting tired, didn't want to walk. I didn't want to get it up or anything. And I would get bruises because I was starting to build um Uh, less immunity and mm -hmm. everything else. So I was getting sick super fast. And then uh, one day they took me into the hospital and then that's when my diagnosis came in and it completely changed like the my family dynamic, right? It's like wow. from one day to the next, it's like you get some news and then you're like, what do we do? And at that time, um, I have an older brother. His name is Juan. He's phenomenal. Juan. I love him. <laughs> um, and he is such a person that I admire 
by um, his strength and his endurance and what he does. Mm -hmm. Um, So I love my brother so much. But in that time, um, my family had a Cuban restaurant and we're Colombian. So it's funny that that it's not the same, but um, (laughs) it's the food that we love and it's the thing that's sold. And so uh, we had an amazing restaurant, a family filled restaurant, because everybody that worked there was uh, a part of my family. You Mm. know, Um, when they found out, like, that I had leukemia, they were also part of this journey Mm. with us. Um, So we were trying to juggle me going into the hospital, but also um, continuing our business and also having my brother and um, trying for him to not get in so much contact with me because I would get too sick because Mm. he would come from school and he would have to shower really quick. And and then I would have to be away from him and then be with him. And then my mom couldn't get sick. So it was like all these different types of dynamics coming in. And so um, when I finished uh, my and went into remission, uh, my family, unfortunately, through the hardships that we were facing in those three years um so it was like you were like about two and then that was like a three-year period it was a three-year period of just a lot of hardships um i lost my hair twice uh Mm -hmm. and so i have little me little bald-headed little girl (laughs) um but in that time i saw my mom's strength i always say that my cancer story isn't so much of my story but my mom's story Mm -hmm. and the strength that she put up um And everything that God was teaching her in that time, I always tell her, Mom, you are my superhero. Like, Mm. you are the person that I admire the most. Uh, Because she would juggle being at home with my brother and my uh, my dad and and then also juggling that she would never miss a pill. She would always be on time to all my doctor's appointments. She would come um, and hold my hand when I was just screaming bloody murder because mm. of how much pain I was in or um, just how tired I was or I didn't want anybody else to touch me. Um, and she was through it all. Um, and God really anointed her in that season because she would sit night after night just like flipping through the pages learning everything that is about leukemia because Mm. she wanted to to help me as much as possible right um and in that time back in the day it was more crucial um now we have more types of uh, medications and you know some I don't know the word for it, but uh, yes. something to help. Uh, yes, and like more treatments. Yeah, more treatments. And so back in the day, my mom was like, I need to do everything precise, perfect. And, and that's what she did for three years. And then um, unfortunately, through that time, uh, my parents uh, did break up. Um, they mm. ended up getting a divorce. And I um, moved to Colombia for just a school year. It was about yes. nine months, 10 months. I don't really With your know. mom? With yes, with mom. my mom and my brother. Uh, my dad stayed here with his family in Florida. Um, both of my parents are from Colombia. They moved to Florida when they got married, and then they had me and my brother. Um, and so we're locals. We're from here. We're here. <laughs> and so Always. it was very difficult for my brother to transition from Florida and the lifestyle that we live here because it's so different from um, the Colombian yes. atmosphere and the Floridian atmosphere. So yes. um, for me, I basically lived in a hospital. And so I didn't know any different. I was so young that I, I couldn't tell. Um, yes. And I was able to adapt, but my brother had a harder time with that. And um, my mom saw that and she wanted to honor my brother too. And she loves him and she loves me. And she's like, I want the best for you. And so we moved back to Florida. Wow. Wow. Um, How old was your ba- brother? My brother is about two and a half years older than I am. So I am 21. He is 23 or 24. Mm. Somewhere in that age. I'm sorry, Juan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so when I was over there, yeah, if I was six, he was eight. So that's yes. like our age range that we were in uh, when we were living in Colombia. Then when we moved back, um, my mom was like in survival mode, right? Now she's a single mom. Um, mm. She has two kids and she's trying to navigate through life and um, through the circumstances that we were in and just some hardships that she's had. And I, if you ask her, she has the most amazing story. I think that anybody could ever have and how she mm. battled so many different things and she honored God through all of it. Mm. I, I, I always say I admire her the most. Um, and so in that time of just desperation, she um, got married to another man. Um, and in that time, it was it was more of just trying to get by. You know, mm. it was, uh, we were trying to create a family again, and, and we tried our best, but unfortunately it didn't work out. Yes. And um, 
we still love the family. We're not so much in contact right now, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, and God was tying ties that we needed to tie. Nice. Um, and then afterwards, um, a couple years go by. And, and, and through this time, uh, I do want to say that God has, like, infused himself in our lives, right? And so every time that something bad would happen, like, God would would deliver us from it. It would like, yes. he would just show us like his grace and show us his love. So mm-hmm. I grew up in like a Christian household. We would pray at night, you know, I, I would know like, Hey mom, can you pray with me? Yes. <laughs> or like, Aww. Hey dad. Cause I, I went from house to house. So like Mondays and Tuesdays with my dad, Wednesdays and Thursdays with my mom, every other Friday, every mm-hmm. other weekend. And so I was from house to house to house to house. And so my, ha- my life, I've always been moving and navigating and, and re- a com like readapting myself. Adapting, yes. Um, and actually, uh, when I look back, I'm like, Lord, that was the step of my mission work now. Like yes. being able to adapt to new locations, being able to uh, love the people that are around me in the season that I'm in. Yes. For the next season, I don't know if I'm going to see them, but I love them properly in the mm-hmm. season that I was in. And so I knew that now, but back then I didn't know that that was the, the formation of who I was yes. going to become. And then um, a couple years later, my mom got remarried to an amazing man, and they're still married today. Mm. And um, they have, he has two other kids, uh, two girls, and then uh, a son. So he has three kids. And then it was me mm. and my brother. And so we turned in from a family of two to a family of five. five. Wow. <laughs> so That's it was awesome. a huge change. It was something <laughs> out of this world because uh, you get two blended families from polar different um, just upbringings. And mm. so um, they came from a different type of um, upbringing that was more American and we came from a very Colombian household that uh, you know you have to look very proper all the time you know you got to have your hair done and and so <laughs> um, and then my sisters would wear pajamas and I would be like what are we doing here like it was just a whole <laughs> culture shock but they taught me so much and I taught them of like hey let's do our hair let's do this and so um, but we also because we're a blended family we came through a lot of um hard times yes. right and that we bumped heads a lot um and so in that season i went through a really hard like depression and so so how how old were you at um at that time i was around i met them when i was like nine years old and then they got married and i was around 11 years old mm-hmm. at that time and um I was like, Lord, and it was about a year long battle that I was facing. And I just went from being like super happy all the time. The person that you see now is like, that's who I was when I was little, yes. wow. <laughs> uh, besides when I was, when I had cancer, but um, just because of all the symptoms. But anyways, um, I went from this super happy girl that would dress up and have so much fun with people to like not wanting to be around anybody that I didn't want to see or like talk to anybody. I was just always upset. I was filled with so much anger because I didn't understand. I said, why are we going from house to house to house to house? Why do I keep seeing people come in and out of my life? Like why? Um, And then one day I said some words to my mom that were, I, I would never, ever repeat again because it was just so um, hurtful. Mm. And, and when I now that I see that, I'm like, Mom, I wish I never told you. But those words led up to something different. And so mm. my mom comes back and replies to me, I don't even know who you are anymore. Mm. I was like, I was like stunned. I was like, I don't. I don't even know who I am anymore. So like I ran upstairs and I, mm. I hopped in my bed and I was just like, Lord, like if you're real, I need you to show me. I need you to show me right now that that you're real. And I I heard a little whisper in my ear and it said, give it to me. Just give it all to me. And so I like in desperation, I like shot my hands up to heaven. I said, I surrender. And I just screamed it. I said, I surrender. And from crying um, and weeping to just complete peace, I just felt his presence just come and flood into my room. Like, like it was just something that I've never experienced in my life before. Mm. And in that moment, I I surrendered my life to Christ in my bedroom. And I said, 
I will serve you the best way I know how for the rest of my life. I said, I don't, I don't know what I felt, but I know that I felt something. It was something that transformed me from the inside out, but it's, but it's not to say that the next day, like everything was handy dandy, perfect, like Mm. rainbows and sunshines. (laughs) Um, but it was that I was renewed and I actually went into more battles because now I look different from one day to the next, right? Is, um, I'm trying to be more joyful uh, because it wasn't like I had this form of depression and then the next day, like it just disappeared. Um, Even though we serve a God that does, Mm. um, doesn't mean it always happens. And for me, it didn't happen like that, but it was the next day I tried. And from that day on, I tried every day and I told my mom, I want to go to church. I want to go to church. I want to do this. And so um, my mom would take me to church. I would go into the kids ministry and I would start serving. And Mm. that's where my love to serve people and to honor people was like just it, it all consumed me. Like I would wake up at 5 a.m., get ready for church. And at around like seven o'clock, I would come in to Christ Fellowship in the main campus in the Gardens campus. And I would sit in the online room when we used to have church online. Yes. Um, and uh, that pastor that was pastoring online, he would allow me to sit there and I would sleep until the first service in his chair oh my and gosh. until the service came up and then he would say juliana service is on I, said, I would run into the kids ministry and i would serve all day long we had about four services at the time and i would serve every single one of them and then wow. at the end of the day i would call my mom from whoever phone that i had at the time <laughs> and i'd be like hey mom i'm ready and so she would come with my mm. stepdad pick me up and from there I was always much different than my siblings, right? And so they would see me, like, go to church, not come back for the rest of the day, and then see me at the end of the day. Hmm. And then that also sparked an interest in them. And then later on, my sisters joined me in serving. And then, oh. um, but they also live with their mom. So it would be not as consistent because they have both. Um, yes. I would stay with my mom most of the time. Yes. And um, my dad also honored me a lot in allowing me to go to church and serve all day. And then at the end of the day, he would pick me up and we would go. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, That's so it, It's so honestly sweet. amazing. But yeah, so growing up, God has given me the seeds to be planted. But from that, my parents have installed faith in me, but I was the one that carried it and carried it along. And so uh, from there, I kind of went into... Um, like trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So I was going into worship and then I also served in the cafe for a really long time. (laughs) That was not for me. I will tell you right now, don't make me cook water because I will burn it. Um, (laughs) Yeah. And people say, oh, you said cook. Yeah. I said cook, not boil. Cook. I will cook water. I am the worst cook ever. Um, There was this one time that uh, we were making a pot of coffee and we forgot the filter and it was the middle of service and just coffee was pouring out like a, wow. like a fountain wow. in the middle of the gardens campus and, wow. and service was coming out and I look at my friends and we're like, what are we going to do? <laughs> So, no coffee for anyone. No coffee for anybody. <laughs> that day, there was no coffee. Um, but it's just like so many different things that has just so much joy that God has moved in my life. But those in those hard times, like I would still go home and I still felt heavy, right? And hmm. I would still feel like, Lord, I still have this depression. I still have this anxiety that I'm feeling. Why? Hmm. And he's like, be still and know that I am God. Right. Hmm. And so, um, then he spoke Jeremiah 29, 11 into my life for, I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. And so I held on to that and I clung on to it. So when I had hard times with, um, my step family and I didn't understand their ways, um, I was able to say, Oh Lord, you have a plan and a purpose for me. Um, in the time that I had cancer, I was, held back from school and I never thought it was fair because I was like you never gave me a chance to Mm. prove myself and so in high school I would I wanted to be in the military so badly it was the thing that I wanted to do (laughs) I was in JROTC in Jupiter High School 
and I was dedicated. I said, this is what I'm going to do. I love serving people and I love to save people. And so I was like, I'm going to be an Air Force pilot. Like, this is what I want. And <laughs> God said, ha ha, you're so funny. <laughs> and then, um, so going into high school, I was going from a, a different type of transition. Now I'm trying to become someone, right? You're trying to get a career. You're trying to do something. Yes. And... um then I was like, okay, Lord, this is what I'm going to do. And so I became, when I graduated, I graduated as a cap, no, captain, yeah, a captain out of my team, uh, out of my battalion. And so mm -hmm. I was like the third in command. Um, I was the S1 out of my battalion. So I would get everybody's information and I would put it into um, the, the books and make sure that you have everything in order from all your awards and different things. Wow. So I managed a lot in high school and I would work full time and it, I was just doing the most. <laughs> 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 and um, in that time, God is like, hey, I want you to go on a mission trip. And I didn't know. How I mean, old were you? I was 15 years old. I was about to turn 15. So I was a freshman. Oh, my gosh. Uh, in high school. Uh, in high school? Yeah, it was high school. Middle school. So Anyways, that was like three years after anytime. that encounter with God. Yeah, it was. And it at first, like you, you hear me say, like the Lord told me back in the day, I didn't hear him like that. Mm. It was just like everything was opening for me and I was yes. just walking through them. And so um, I've always wanted to serve outside of the country because when I lived in Colombia, I saw the need and I, I loved watching like people walk and sell things on the streets and, yes. and do their performances or, yes. you know, try to sell us, um, uh, ants, yes. <laughs> everything. ants, they try to sell us everything. <laughs> and I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that started my love for like, uh, international, like, you know, traveling. And so, mm. um, I told my mom, mom, I, I want to go to Haiti. That's, that's what I want. And so she's like, okay, we can, we can try to do that, you know? And I was like, uh, okay, what are we going to do to save up the money? Because Christ Fellowship at the time was um, allowing missionaries to go to Haiti and yes. for a week-long trip. And um, and so for my quinceanera that my mom made for me, um, I was like, what are we going to do with this? Because I honestly don't want one anymore. <laughs> my mom's <laughs> like, you've wanted one your whole life, Aww. you know? And so um, I was like, no, Mom, maybe – what we can do is just ask the people that are coming to my quinceanera to donate money. Mm. And so all the money that I raised, I raised about almost $2,000 yes. from my trip. And um, wow. I held it there and I applied for Haiti. And then I got a denied letter and said, no, we're not able to send you to Haiti because you applied for a family trip. And it's just you that's going. Mm. But they said, but we encourage you to go into the student trip that's coming up the following year. Wow. I was like, mm, okay. And so I waited for a really long time. The trip that was coming up didn't end up happening. And so I was like, Lord, it's been a year. I have $2,000 in my bank account. I haven't touched it because <laughs> <laughs> they donated it to me. In the end of the day, it's not my money. And um, Pastor Abriel came up to me one day. Mm. And she was my student pastor at the time. And she says, why don't you go to Bolivia? I was like, oh, my god, Like, never heard of that country before. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't Bolivia? know. Where is Bolivia? <laughs> and uh, she's like, no, you speak Spanish. Like, it would be great. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, maybe. <laughs> and then one day I was like, yeah, you know what? Let's just do it. Because I have the money. It's been a year long. And I'm like, okay, what are we going to do? And so... Uh, I submitted my application. They came back and they're like, yes, we would love for you to be a part of this trip. And I was like, oh my great. <laughs> like, I don't know <laughs> what I'm getting myself into, but I, I'll go. And um, so going into the trip, we ended up being, uh, I think it was like nine girls. I don't fully remember the number, but we were all girls and it was so much fun. And those girls, I still talk to to this day and we talk about old times and, and how they're growing and, you know, maturing in the Lord. Um, but it was such an experience from day one since we got there. It was just this whole, like, I just saw beauty throughout the entire country. So we were staying with Children's Impact Network, which is an yes. amazing organization. Wow. Um, and they helped me and discipled me throughout many of my years um, and leading up to even present day. But God, it was so funny. Um, I was about 16 years old. So now it's been since I was 15. It's been a year, um, 16 now. 
and um, Pastor Abriel comes up to me, and in one of the days, we go out into the community, and we talk, and we tell them about Jesus, but we also give them a gift. So it has, like, mm. rice and, like, oil and whatever they need to cook or what they need for their family. Yes. So it's like a big gift basket. And Pastor Abriel comes up to me, and she says, <laughs> Juliana, I would love for you to talk to this woman. And I said, who? Me? <laughs> I said, you want... <laughs> you want <laughs> No, are you sure? Me? And she goes, yes, I want you to talk to this woman. I said, why? (laughs) And she says, because you know Spanish. I said, is that the only reason? Are you sure? (laughs) And she's like, yes, I think you can do it. And so with my group, um, we went into this house. And before we went in, we were going in this van. And I remember clear as day, I had this five-star notebook and it had like three Bible verses, which is the only three Bible verses I knew. It was Jeremiah 29, 11, John 3, 16, yeah. Philippians 4, 6, 4, 13. I don't even remember now. <laughs> but it was like Philippians something. Uh-huh. And I had them there and I was reciting them. I was like, Lord, I just need you to <laughs> tell me what to do because I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh my gosh. And everybody else in the car was so like calm, cool, and collected. They're like having fun. And I'm in the back of the van just, just going through it. Oh. And so I'm so nervous and I had the five star notebook and then I had like this other notebook with me and I had like two bible verses they were just empty and I was like I don't know what I'm doing but I'm gonna bring it and so (laughs) we stopped at this house and I'm like "Are, are, are we here and we get out of the van and it's a clay house and never in my life have I ever seen a house like that and it was just made out of clay and it was kind of bigger than I imagined but it was still there was nothing and so we went through this like I don't even know what kind of door it was because it wasn't a door I can tell you that (laughs) it was just some type of shed thing and so we Mm. moved it across um and we stepped over and and she made us feel so welcome she had about three kids um and they were all running around just having so much fun and they were trying to get all the chairs for us and make us feel at home i was Mm. like no like it's okay and she's like no 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 and so she would get like a stump from over here a broken chair from over there and just made us feel so welcome and her backyard was just like filled with like just trash like it it, you could tell that she was just very very poor Mm. and um because i'm nosy i like looked into her house (laughs) and i said i said what do you got in there and it was just nothing like dirt floors and i've never seen that you know i'm coming from florida and i had a beautiful house um and i saw that and and it broke my heart but at that time you know i wanted to become an you know in the military so I was very strong I was like no I'm not gonna cry (laughs) and I just like looked in and and then kept walking we sat down and um the lady introduced me that was our host at the time they're like oh Juliana wants to say something to you and the first thing that came out of my mouth I I don't even know what went through my mind was tell me your story Mm -hmm. I said I want you to tell me your story and so she she said okay and she told me her story that she was um a a woman that fell in love with a man that it was an abusive relationship and um, left her with three kids on the side of the road and then she was on a motorcycle and she got into a motorcycle accident and broke her leg and hasn't been able to go to the doctor to fix it and and she works like night and day for her kids and she's like and I still don't have enough and then she told me a story that um that really got to me that it was about her kids and that she's like, I don't have enough to provide for my kids. And she started to cry. And I was like, um, excuse me, but can I give you a hug? And she's like, yes, you can give me a hug. So we both stand up from our chair and I walk towards her and I just bear hugged her, like just grabbed my arms and I wrapped myself around her. And in that time that I put my arms around her and she was just crying, she, the Lord says to me, this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And I was like, Lord, I can't do that. I can't do this because it's so hard. It's so hard to love people while they're hurting. I said, I cannot. I said, Lord, I, I do not want to. And so afterwards, she starts to tell me that she can't provide for her kids because um, the books that she had, um, they would have notebooks and they would learn something and they would have to erase it for the following lesson. So they had one notebook for the three of them that they were all learning from. And 
I turned back and I looked at my chair and I, I saw my five-star mm. notebook and I picked it up and it wasn't part of our gift basket. It wasn't part of anything, but it was designed for her. And I yes. said, this is for you. This is what God wants to give you. And then the kids come running out of nowhere from the house, like, you know, because they're peering through and they want to know. And they just grab it and they were in awe of how like beautiful it was. And they're like, mira, está muy blanco, está, está nuevo, mira. And mm. I was just in love with them. I said, there's a couple Bible verses in there that, um, that one day you will learn because they're in English, but you will learn it one day. And she's like, okay, thank you, thank you. Mm. And so she was just in awe of just like how God's presence was there. And then afterwards, you know, people were crying, but I, I stayed strong. And the reason the only reason I stayed strong wasn't because I didn't want to show her empathy or I, or I didn't want to show her compassion is that I wanted to be her strength hmm. when she couldn't have it. And so that's the only reason why I didn't cry because once we left, oh, before we left, the kids are the sweetest little kids that I've ever met. And um, they come running out of nowhere. I don't even know where they came from. They came from the back and they were holding puppies. <laughs> and so they gave us these puppets. I said, this is the best day ever. Like, I love this. <laughs> oh my and, but, gosh. Um, then afterwards, uh, we said our goodbyes and we went on our way and we got into that van and everybody was talking about what was happening because they had a translator, right? And I was just in the back of the van just covering my eyes because I was just bawling. I said, Lord, there is no way I can do this because I heard you so clearly. This is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And I said, I cannot. I said, this is way too hard. You know, that you, for to care for someone that you can't give them answers of why things happened or um, how you're going to work in their life, how can I do that? And he's like, through love, Juliana, through love. And I was like, no. And so I went into the denial for so long. It was about a year long that God was like, you're, you're a missionary, you're a missionary, you're a missionary. I said, no, Mom. Like, Lo no, Lord, I, I cannot. I cannot do that. And so I pursued being in um, the military still in disobedience <laughs> and oh um i said okay. how was that <laughs> yeah that was hard i'll tell you that for sure <laughs> and uh, finally the lord allowed me to go to haiti which was my heart's desire right and so i fundraised they called me the fundraising queen because it would just come like in an instance um and i was like i don't know where it came from but it came from somewhere um wow. and and that's the first time that god showed me his provision that he's the one that provides and yes. I went into this mission trip, like, just super excited because I'm like, I saw the experience from Bolivia. Now I'm going into this new area of my life. And so, so going that in, was a year after. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So this okay. was a year after. So I was um, not 17 yet because um, we went in March and my birthday and my birthday's in April. And so we had a couple months before I turned 17. And <laughs> um, we got there and we were just having so much fun. It was so beautiful. I love Haiti and just the atmosphere of the people that love and that it's it's comforting at mm. times. You know, there's always trials and tribulations and, and fear that can instill in a country. But once you look at the beauty from it, it's just it transcends. Right. And yes. so I was in there. I was in awe of just everybody dancing and having so much fun. And um, one of the days. I was at this home visit because we would also do home visits, but it was very different than what we did in Bolivia yes. uh, because it's a different organization. And one day we were walking from one house to another, and I see this little girl like carrying some buckets on her head. And I said, you teach me. <laughs> I said, I want to know. And, of course, we had no type of communication. It was just nothing. And so we would use hand signals. And she was with another little girl. And at that time I said, can, can you teach me? And she goes, and so Aww. she puts the bucket on my head. Of course, there's nothing in the bucket because I can't hold it. <laughs> and she goes, come, come. And so my team and I follow her. And it was the best decision that I, we've ever made in our entire life. And we went down and it was a river just filled with people. And they were all washing their clothes. And so I saw this lady and she was and like just washing her clothes and I said I want her so I, I walked up straight to her and the two little girls followed me and um, I said can you teach me and in my ch church dress in my in my 
shirt that was tied. I was just fully clothed. I got into the water and I started washing with her. And she's like, this is how you wash clothes. So she's the woman that taught me how to wash clothes by hand. And I had no form of communication unless the translator was translating for me. But of course, he had the whole team to translate. Yes. Um, but I, we would do hand signals to communicate. And we had so much fun trying to communicate and we would just laugh because we had no idea what was happening. (laughs) And then um, I was like, okay, thank you so much. And then they're like, Juliana, we got to go because I'm always the last one out. (laughs) I'm always late for everything. And they're like, Juliana, we got to go. And my pastor's like, come on. And I was like, yeah, I'm coming. And so I got up and then the girl that was trying to teach me how to hold the bucket uh, goes like this. She's like, wait, wait. I was like, okay, I'll wait. Um, and she goes, like, running away. And I was like, where is she going? But, I, of course, she told me to wait, so I'm going to wait. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then I see her running back. It wasn't very long, but I see her running back, and she tells me to sit down. She goes like this. And so I sat down on a rock, and she pulls up my dress to my uh, my pant, like, the end of my knees. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, what's happening right now? <laughs> and... Um, I was just like, what's going on? And what I saw in her hand was soap. And I knew immediately that it wasn't her soap. It was someone else's soap. But she began to wash my legs. And in that time, I just touched her face. I said, you don't have to. I'm like, no, no, no. And she goes, and she starts to wash my legs. And I, I that for the first time is I knew what love looked like. I knew that love w- looked beyond borders it didn't look that I had straight hair and she had curly hair it didn't matter that um, she had dark skin and I had light skin it didn't matter that I had green eyes and she had brown eyes it didn't matter that I was from Florida and she was from Haiti it didn't matter that we she didn't believe in Jesus and that I did and I saw love I saw love transcend in a way that that I've never had before in my life and then God says do you want to be a missionary and I said Lord, I will love like that little girl loved me to the other people around me. And so I said, yes, I will be a missionary because I want to show that love. That that little girl with no communication, she showed me more love than anybody in my entire life could ever show me. Because it was it was selfless. She got down like Jesus did and he washed people's feet he he showed love and so she washed my legs and she pulled down my skirt and I gave her a hug and then she like goes up to a translator and she pulls his shirt and says to him can she be my godmother and he asked me I said I'm leaving tomorrow and she says it doesn't matter it doesn't matter will you be my godmother so I am someone's godmother somewhere around the world (laughs) and she's probably out of school and I'm hoping for the best for her and I pray for her sometimes because I see the picture on my phone that I see her and I I'm in that picture that someone captured for me and I'm so honored and so blessed to have that picture because it reminds me of why I do what Mm -hmm. I do and it's me looking at the lady that's teaching me how to wash clothes and it's the little girl looking at me with so much love sitting on that bucket just like this and just so in awe that I had straight hair and that I had light skin because she's never seen someone like me before. Mm. And she goes, <laughs> and I just <laughs> loved her so much. And so that sparked my interest to just go on to missions and go full force. And of course, I was like, well, a missionary doesn't make money. So how can mm. I make money? And so I was trying to figure out how can I incorporate my things of wanting to be in the military and yes. also what God wanted to do. <laughs> and so because that's who I am like, okay <laughs> how am I gonna do this yeah I'm this like how, <laughs> how am I gonna do this I'm like I'm gonna instill what I want but also God you're gonna be in there too and he's like you're funny um <laughs> so that same year I go into Bolivia and um I just fall in love same thing um God just moved in a way that was just like this is what you're gonna do I know it and so um after that I was like okay Lord like we'll do it um, the following year, I was around 17, I turned eight, yeah, so I was 17 years old the following year I graduated, uh, because I graduated earlier than I was supposed to, because I took online classes at school, and I just needed to get out, I was like, I need, I know what I want to do, wow. and I was like, okay, let's go, and, um, then, uh, I applied to be, uh, the, what's it called, Uh, an intern in Bolivia. The same interns that were taking care of me my first trip, they inspired me to want to do the same. And so when I turned 18, I told my mom, I want to go intern in Bolivia for the summer. She's like, 
um, okay, are you sure this is what you want? I said, yeah, I, I want to go and intern there. And so um, I applied and they accepted me and I was um, the intern for children's evangelism. And so I would take different types of missionaries to different areas of um, our region and we would just love on the kids and do sidewalk Sunday school, which is like a play of explaining parts of the Bible. You know, we could do the story of Jonah or Joseph or whatever it was. Oh, and wow. we would do songs and play soccer with them. And so that's where you them. learn how to preach. Yeah, <laughs> basically, basically. <laughs> um, sometimes I would get nervous and I would tell people like, hey, you go. <laughs> I said, I I'm here for the whole summer. You got this. Um, and so I just fell in love with just serving and meeting new people just like from different parts of the United States they've just loved me in new ways and they gave me new tools that I could use right and then afterwards um, after that summer which was the most amazing summer of my entire life and I think it would be a staple of mm -hmm. my life because of my team um, we're still talking today and we have so much fun all the time we're like hey do you remember that time that we were in <laughs> Bolivia and we're like yeah of course best summer ever <laughs> um, but yeah they they're They are someone that is going to be with me for the rest of my life. You know, I might not see them. I might not talk to them all the time. But I know that they're a key part of my story yes. um, and what they've taught me. But then I came back home and I was like, oh, now we got to do real life. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> back I'm Back to reality. <laughs> right. Back to reality. And I was like on this spiritual high, right? Because I'm working with the Lord every day. I'm doing His work. And now I'm coming back home. And so I'm like, I'm going to do the same thing that I did in Bolivia. And it's not like that. <laughs> Because you come back home and you get comfortable. Mm. And so I'm like, oh, Lord, like this is not what I want to do. But I went into school anyways. I went to Southeastern University for um, some time, yes. and I was doing ministerial leadership, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm going to be a pastor. This is what I want to do because, you know, I want to be a missionary, so a pastor can make some money. <laughs> 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 and um, I was like, this is, this is a good game plan, Lord. And he's like, mm-hmm, okay. <laughs> this is, keep doing it. Just keep doing it. <laughs> and in that time, my my mom and I were just going through a really hard transition because I was coming back from um, just living a life independently to coming back home and being with my mom and um, just trying to figure out how is adulting and also, you know, being a missionary and also being a college student, like all these different things and being her child at the yes. end of the day, like that's still hard. She still has to tell me what to do. I still live under her roof. Um, and so we were just like bumping heads. And... I was like, okay, Lord, like, I don't feel comfortable right now. And my schooling was going okay, but I was just like, I don't really want to do this. Like, it's not intriguing me in any way, and I'm, I don't feel passionate like I was when I was living in Bolivia. And then I fasted for a month because I was like, I need clarity in what mm. I need to do. And so I was like, I'm going to set time aside. I'm going to get off of social media. I'm going to fast some food because I love sweets. And at that time, I was like, You know, let's put those away. <laughs> um, and I said, okay, God, this time I need you to reveal yourself of what you want me to do. And so I prayed and I fasted. And um, one night when my mom and I were bumping heads, uh, I got onto the computer and I was watching some missionary videos. And it came across this organization called Adventures and Missions. And okay. one of my friends at that time, She went on a missionary journey and she came back and she was living with us because mm -hmm. I invited her into our house. Um, and so she stayed in my room and I stayed in my mom's room and it was um, a different dynamic of what we're used to. And that, I think that's why we also bumped heads a lot because my mom and I had to share a room. And um, my when I was sitting outside and, and she was in, I think she was visiting someone at that time because it was just me and my mom that night. And... I like was watching this computer and I was just crying because I was watching these women like go into different bars and just love the people. And then I watched them uh, play with the kids like soccer or they were just helping them and whatever it was. And I was like, I want to do that again. I want to know 
that love again. Like I was just in love with how they loved people. It wasn't mm. about like how they shared the gospel. It's no, it's just like they loved people where they were standing. And I was like, that's what I want. And so <laughs> that night there was a, a trip to Asia that was available and I, I signed up. <laughs> I said, oh let's do it. And my mom had no idea. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so, so after, so you came back from, um, from, Bolivia. 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 Yeah. And then how long did you stay at school? So it before was before you apply. Oh no, I was in school still. In school. Uh -huh. Okay. And so, so how long how long did you you were already like okay, I need to yeah. do something else. I need yes. to go back to missions. So how mm -hmm. long did it take you? Um so when I came back from Bolivia, it was around August and I started school uh like in the mid August type mm -hmm. of September area and by the time that I like finish my fast it was like the end of november mm. so it was going towards the end of the semester yes and god is like you need to go to asia this is what i want you to do and so i was like okay lord i'm gonna apply and i was like if i don't get it it's not from you like i'm just gonna you know step out in faith and try something new because yes. at that time like i said before it was just opening doors is how I felt God's presence. It wasn't yes. like a an audible voice. It wasn't someone coming up to me and just prophesying. It was just like I would just take little steps of faith and he would yes. open those doors or he would close them. And <laughs> I got onto the computer. I wrote out my testimony. I sent in my passport. I sent in everything. I was just <laughs> ready to go. And my mom and your had mom on the other room, like, <laughs> what is she doing? She had no, <laughs> no idea. idea. <laughs> and it was like that weekend. And the following week, I got a call, and it was Adventures and Missions. And they answered the phone, and I answered the phone, and they asked me, "Oh, we're gonna do your interview over the phone." I said. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I wasn't ready, but perfect. And so she asked me about my testimony, why you want to do the things that you want to do. And I said, it's because I want to love people. I want to love people where they are. I want to find them and share how God can transform your life from one area to the next. And um, and after the conversation, she's like, okay, you're in. I said, but, wait, what? <laughs> I'm in? And she's wow. like, yes, you're in. I want you to be a part of this team. And it's supposed to be a longer process than what it was, but it was just immediate. God said, yes, this is what I want you to do. And at that time, my mom didn't know. And I had to tell her, God is calling me to Asia. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I was about 18 years old. Yes, I was 18 years old when I applied. And I said, okay, how am I going to tell my mom that, me at 18 is going to go to a three month mission trip to Asia, to Southeast Asia. And oh so um, the trip was <laughs> two months in Thailand and one month in Cambodia. And it's a, it was a long traveling process, but we'll get there. And so my mom is like, oh, I was like, hey, mom, I, I need to talk to you. And beforehand, I was like, Lord, let me pray because if I can't do this by myself. So I sat her down on her couch and I said, mom, before I tell you this, like, I, I want to pray. And so she's like, okay. And so we prayed together and I said, Lord, give me the words to speak. Let it be from you and not from me. Like, let it be appointed to you. And I said, mom, I believe God is calling me to go to Asia. And she goes, What? <laughs> like oh no gosh. you're crazy like you're just hearing some missionary journeys that um our friend went on because she loves asia and and then some other missionaries that i've been talking to from you know the past mission trips that i took and and so she's like no no it, it's not gonna happen and i said mom like i believe this is what god is calling me to do and so in the end of our conversation she's like okay let's try and she's like how much is it and i said <laughs> uh it's sixty four hundred dollars so six thousand four hundred dollars and i said mom we have one month to fund <laughs> because by the end of my um the deadline is january and we were at the end of november going into december it was that week wow and she's like you have one month and she's like that there's no way that we're gonna raise sixty four hundred dollars in one month and she's like no i said mom god is gonna provide so every day i woke up and i would say god what are we gonna do today and it would be like bracelets would come to my head and so i would make bracelets night after night just Whoa. braiding them and i would go to work and i would um Work, at that time, I believe I was working at Christ Fellowship um, as a child care provider, but I also worked at a restaurant, and I was doing full-time school. And then wow. at night, I would just be 
making these bracelets so that I could sell them for like five dollars. It's not the cost of the bracelet, yes. but it's the donation. Yes. Um, and so I would sell them, and people would give me twenty dollars, fifty dollars, like a hundred dollars. And then the next day, I would wake up and I said, "God, what do you want me to sell today?" And he's like, "Donuts." And I said. Let's sell donuts. And so I would buy <laughs> like two boxes of donuts, go into our um, CF students and CF kids and just say, hey, do you want to help me? And I would have this amazing spiel of what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to be helping kids in sex trafficking. I'm going to be helping missionaries and orphans and all these different things. And people would be like, boom, boom, $20, $10, $5, wow. like just giving me money left and right. And they would take a donut and they were just so happy. And then this is already two weeks in and I've raised about $3,000. And so wow. I still need $3,500 like left. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Lord. And this day I was like, Lord, what are we going to do today? Are we going to sell bracelets? Are we going to send postcards? What are we going to do? And he says, be still and know that I am God. I said, What? <laughs> And I what said, do you mean? I said, what, what do you mean be still and know that I am God? And one morning he like wakes me up and I just say Jehovah Jireh. And I said, Jehovah Jireh. Like I know what that means is uh, God my provider. But yes. I'm like, what, what does that mean? And um, he's like, I am your provider. He said, be still and know that I am God. And I was like, okay. And so in disobedience, because sometimes that's my journey, <laughs> um, I went to Dunkin' Donuts. I bought two boxes of donuts. I did my spiel. I put it right in CF students, and people would come, like, crawling for donuts before. And I put it right in front of me, and I was waiting and waiting, and nobody came. And I was just, you know, I said, hey, you want to buy some donuts? I'm helping some missionaries, and I would do my spiel, and then, oh, uh, no, thank you. Nobody ate any of my donuts. I ended up having to give that box away, the entire box. Because in disobedience, God is like, no, I told you, I am Jehovah Jireh. And so I was just like, just have the donut. Just take it. I don't want to see it anymore. So I wasted like $24 on those boxes of donuts. And I was like, okay, Lord, I surrender. <laughs> I'll give it to you. And I said, be still and know that I'm God. I will sit here. And so, of course, I still went to work. I still needed to do my duties at school and finish it up. <laughs> and I said, those boxes of donuts went to waste. And so <laughs> I went home, and I was watching TV, and I said, okay, what do I do? Nothing. And then he's like, be still and know that I'm God. And my mom came up to me one day, and she's like, I haven't seen you, like, make any bracelets. I haven't seen you sell donuts. Like, what is happening? And I said, Mom, God said do nothing. <laughs> and, and she's like, how do you know he said to do nothing? I said, mom, I bought 24 donuts and not one did I sell. Not one. People would come up to me, ask me, what are you doing? I would give them the spiel and they didn't want to. He, like, they were like, oh, okay. And they would walk away. I would be like, what? Oh my gosh. And so uh, she's like, are you sure that's what he's saying? I said, I promise you that's what he's saying. And so I sat there. And I want to give you some backstory. So when I was 16, um, I got my license and I got a car and it was so much fun. Um, but one day I was driving to school. It was early in the morning and um, a van comes up and crosses me on a red light. And I was on a green light and I hit him. And so we spun. My car was completely totaled. Like it was just wow. gone. Um, it was just such a bad wreck that I ended up on the other side of the street. The cop thought I was coming from another angle instead wow. of coming this way. It was just a very bad car accident. And when I tell you the presence of God was like a bubble around me, not one thing did I break. I mean, I fractured a little bit of my eye because I punched myself. <laughs> wow. um, but people always told me like, Juliana, you should have died because of how bad this car accident was. And um, I, when I, it's so funny, when I get hurt, I get overly nice. <laughs> and I actually pass out in my car and I come back to, and I just see everything broken around me. And I, the first thing that I thought of was like, get out, just get out of your car. And so like I open it and like I fall out of my car and someone catches me and they pull me out into the side and I don't even remember walking. I just remember sitting at the end of the day. And I said, thank you, thank you. And then we see the ambulance come and then the uh, the EMT is like standing right in front of me. And I said, wow, you have the most beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
like, okay, let's get your head checked out. I said, I tell you, Jesus is good. <laughs> Oh my god. And so I started telling them about the Lord and I just it, yeah and they're like wow we've never met someone like you before. <laughs> I said me neither. <laughs> I was just gone. Wow. Um, and when he was coming back in because I asked him, "Hey, can you get my phone? It's in it's in my car." And so he went to go get my phone so that I could call my parents and tell them, "Hey, I got into a car accident. I'm on my way to the hospital." Uh, <laughs> um he's like you will not believe it. I said, what? And he's like, the guy that um, you hit because you team boned him just admitted that he was at fault and that never happens. I was like, well, praise God. <laughs> oh my God. And so I went to the hospital and then later on things started to happen and then they ended up suing me. And um, I was like, you're suing me for something that I mean, I hit you, but it wasn't my fault. Like, that that wasn't for me. And my mom started to get stressed out. And she's like, why are they suing us? We only wanted about $4,000 for the car, mm. right? Yes. And so I was like, mom, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what to do. And she's like, well, we have to fight it in the court and whatever else. And so um, she says, okay, let's just keep fighting this. And, you know, we just want $4,000. The car was nothing, but we're going to do it. And uh, this was a two-year-long process. And then going back into the story of going... Going, to, raising the money. Yeah. To go to Asia. Yeah, going, <laughs> the raising the money, going to Asia. Um, God is like, be still and know that I am God. And that was two years back. And um, right at the end, and I was still $3,000 that I was missing because someone donated $500 just out of like nothing. And I was like... God, you're so good. Mm. <laughs> um, and it was the last day, and God granted me um, this time to babysit a little girl. And I was like, okay, so I still have some money left. And it was the last week, and my mom calls me, like, out of panic. I was like, Mom, are you okay? And she's like, you will not believe it. I said, what? And she says, the check just came in from your car accident from when you were 16. I said, okay, like how much did we get? And like, I thought it was just going to be like $4,000. And I'm like, that's going to be my trip. And she's like, we got $64,000. What? And I said, what? And she says, yeah, this is how much we got. And so I was like, there is no way. And I just started weeping. And she's like, you're able to buy your new car. Because at that time, I didn't have one. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to buy my new car. I was able to pay off my mom's debt that she was been trying to get rid of for many, many years. Wow. Um, I was able to pay for the rest of my trip to Bolivia. I helped, I mean, for, um, for Asia. Asia. I also helped um, someone else in my team raise money for Asia. Um, I was able to pay for another trip that the God that God had provided for me. It was to be an intern in Honduras. Um, wow. And then after that, I paid for the company that I've installed um, in 2019. It's a missions organization that right now it's on pause, um, but it will start up one day soon. Wow. But all that is to remind me that I am Jehovah Jireh. You know, I am your provider. Okay, right. And so even though we weren't looking for that much amount of money, it, and God is like, no, I want you to use this for my kingdom. So not one penny did it go to a new closet. It didn't go into a new, like, wardrobe. I didn't get new hair. I didn't, you know, it, it wasn't about me. It wasn't about my mom. It, it was, I wanted to pay my mom's debt because she's honored me. So I wanted mm. to honor her. And so, um with that money, I used it for the kingdom. I said, everything that I can do is for the Lord. And so um, none of that money was for up for grabs. I was wow. like, God, I'm going to honor you with this because you, you've given it to me. You've honored me with this. And so that is God's provision. You know, it took two years, but it was wow. God's perfect timing perfect of that timing. story. Wow. Right. And I was like, God, you're so good. And it was right at the deadline of when everything was due. I'm like, you made me suffer for two weeks. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm sitting there and being still and know that I am God. I'm going to get my $24 for this. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> so my $24? $24. Yeah, he paid me back in full. Um, so the $24 were covered. Everything was done. God is like, i given it to you. And so that wow. was the first real time that I saw God's like, mighty hand at work 
And then after that, um, I told my advisor from school, hey, <laughs> I'm not going to be here next semester because I'm going to Asia. And uh, she was like, what? Are you sure? Like, and I said, yes, I'm going to Asia. And so I, I went on my missions trip. And in Cambodia, I saw God's power in, in a whole new way. Um, I saw it in a form of telling me that I have the authority of God when I've received his His presence is knowing that he's died for me knowing that he is the one that's going to give me all that I need and, and he's shown me time and time again and in Bel- and sorry in Cambodia um it was spiritually heavy Cambodia is a very heavy place mm. uh, especially just in the atmosphere because there is many other religions and in witchcraft and all these um more of demonic spirits right Mm. and we my team and i were just battling through so much just like left and right the devil was just coming at us with our families uh death of our families and and uh insecurities that have been you know stuffed into us that we've kept in a box and that we've never opened up and then on that trip like i was built up i always say that i was a building that collapsed that had to be removed and then restored. And wow. so in that time that I was being broken down, like it was the worst time. Like it was the best time of my life. I appreciate it, but it was it was the beauty and the chaos that I was mm. in in that time. And so I saw that God said to me like your voice has power. Use it. And it's like rebuke the spirits that are coming after you and so Mm. i said i rebuke you in the name of jesus because that's what he's giving me and at first i said it with my mind and then like the first spirit left and then the lord says your voice has power and i said okay lord and so i screamed i said in the name of jesus i rebuke you in the name of jesus and so all the spirits left and they vanished from our team at that time and so uh, I woke up the rest of my team one night and I, I said we just need to pray and mm-hmm. so they're like I believe that we need to pray so our we were a group of 10 and we were all sitting there it was like 3 a.m. and I was soaked in just sweat because it's 103 degrees over there and we were laying on the floor and um, that's how we were sleeping for a whole month and I was just like serving the Lord, teaching English because that's what I went for. I thought I was going into something different, but God knew I needed something new, something Mm. special. And so we were teaching English and we were teaching Bible over there. And that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, never in my life did I ever think I was going to be a teacher because I hated school. I just wanted to get out. I wanted to be in the military missionary work. You don't have to teach or anything. So I thought, (laughs) (laughs) um, and I was teaching English, which is so funny because I'm dyslexic and I am the worst at spelling. I am the worst at reading. But the Lord is like, I'm going to use your insecurities, your yes. disabilities for the kingdom. Right. Yes. And so I was like, OK, Lord, whatever you want to do. <laughs> and so when we were there, we were teaching English and we were loving the kids and having so much fun. And we would go on bicycle rides for miles like they are just on the back of our bikes. And we're just riding and just sweating because it's so hot over there. <laughs> um, but that one night that we just felt those spirits just coming at us um, and we just rebuked them. We're like, no, you have no authority here you have no authority in the grounds of our orphanage like this is ours you cannot pass it and from Mm. that night on like our entire team started bonding and seeing like that that we are a better unit when we're together and that we're fighting the battles with the lord and some people would say like i've felt that i've seen that i've 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 noticed that spirit before and um i'd be like yeah we have power in the name of jesus and then they're like yeah and so we were praying that night and um so many stories are from that time and that that could be another day (laughs) um because there's so many little intertwined like times but i also want to honor your time right and um afterwards i went into um my new season of going into thailand and so we traveled from um sam reap uh, from an area in cambodia and we were traveling it's it was about 62 hours from um what we were traveling and in total we traveled about it was about 150 hours that we traveled oh my goodness. it was so much uh when, when i was on the plane 
on my way to Asia, there was a lady that was Indian next to me, and there was another, uh, like, oh, no, she was Asian, and then he was Indian. And I was this little white Hispanic girl <laughs> in the <laughs> middle. No one communicated to anybody. At first, we were all, like, so it was, like, super in our chairs, just, like, not talking to each other. By the end of the trip, we were, like, laying on top of each other, just, like, <laughs> not caring because it was about, like, a 14-hour trip from where we were to where we were going. And so 14 hours is a long time. So we bonded not in speech but in <laughs> physical bodies. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> but um, it's just an experience in itself. But when we were going – on our way to um, Bangkok in Thailand, mm -hmm. um, I thought I was going into a new branch. I was like, okay, we taught English, we were doing orphan ministry, and now we're going to do something different. And I thought we were going to do sex trafficking ministry. But the Lord is like, no, not yet, Juliana. You're not, I don't want you to get there yet. And so I was like, okay, Lord, if this is what you want. So we ended up teaching English at another orphanage. Okay. Um, the girls that were in that orphanage also struggle with um, senses of abuse and also neglect and abandonment and all these different things. And so wow. it was an all-girls orphanage, and they were the most amazing, spectacular little girls I've ever met in my entire life. Like, they ministered to me way more than I've ever ministered in my entire life. It's just Oh, wonderful women. Um, and so my team, the 10 girls, we got to this place and they just loved us so well. And we would wake up in the mornings and we would do worship and we would have fun and we would teach English. I was teaching the little kids um, just how to, you know, do their ABCs of their colors and mm. different songs and we would clap. And so we do this special thing that we go, we make three W's and our mouth is the, the O and we go, wow. <laughs> and the kids loved it wow. <laughs> and we would just do this amazing um type of schedule and there was this one day that we had this uh, amazing guy that came from the united states and we did like a like a training so because i was trained for the military i knew how to start fires i knew how to tie ropes i i knew a lot of how to do survival training mm. and so i was like i got this we got it. And so uh, I taught them how to build a tent and all these different things of how to start a fire with a, like, a little match and a, um, a cotton ball. And so that we would put it in the little thing and they wow. would make fire. <laughs> and there's this little girl that would just be around me, and her name was May. And uh, she would sit next to me, and I would try to communicate with her, and she had very little English. She had no English at all, barely. And our conversations would be like, May would say to me, oh, Easter day? I said, yesterday. She'd be like, no, Easter day. And I said, yesterday? And she goes, no, Easter day, uh, Christmas. <laughs> and I was oh. like, oh, Easter <laughs> day, Sunday, right? And she goes, yeah. And I would be like, okay, what about it? And she goes, I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> So it's just a long process, but she would try to understand my story and where I came from and the trials that I went through and um, the vulnerable places of my life. And um, and she was just listening. She's like, wow, you love Jesus. I said, I do. I do love Jesus. And we would go into a circle at night and it's all these girls and it's about nine o'clock at night. Even the little girls would be up and they would compete with each other of who knew the most Bible verses. And so the one that won was May and this other amazing little girl, um, her name is Natnari, and they knew like 250 verses like off the top of their head. They would just stand there and recite different scriptures of the Bible. And I was over here like four verses, <laughs> like did not know much. I was just wow. sitting there trying to obey the Lord, but I had the love, right? But they had so much knowledge. And then I came one day, it, um, the main director came to the orphanage and he was preaching to them and telling them and, and they call him dad because he's been there for them for their entire life. Wow. And, <laughs> um, and then one day he says, um, who wants to give their life to Christ? And May just raises her hand. And me, I was stunned. I did not know. I looked at this little girl. I said, you know more verses than me. I said, you know where Jesus went. You know where Jesus laid. You know how he walked. You knew every single thing about him. And I was like, and you want to give your life to Christ? And she goes, 
and she and she made me wait and so I sat there and I was just like in awe and I started to just tears just started streaming down and I'm not a very like a cryoful I don't know I'm gonna make up that word cryoful person Mm -hmm. (laughs) um I just kind of keep it to myself until I'm alone but I just couldn't hold it back because I was just in awe of her just giving her life to Christ and then later on I was walking with her and she says um you love Jesus I want to love Jesus like you do I said I said, I want to know Jesus like you do. And so mm. from that point on, I started studying the word and just falling in love with the scripture and understanding like his power of the word, of the the sword of the spirit and um, going into battle with knowledge, right? Mm. And so what I really traveled halfway across the world for was to meet May so that I would be able to know that the heart knowledge and the mind knowledge, when it comes together, the beauty that it makes, the kingdom building that it can make. Because any time that me and May were together, it was like statics. It was just fire from heaven. Just every time that we were together is because heart and mind were coming together at once. And that is like, God is like, yes, this is my presence. This is mm. what it looks like. This is what it feels like. It feels that ecstatic energy, the joy that overflows. It's the it's the miracle that is building up inside of you. It's that tree that yes. sprouts, right? And so when she told me that, it completely like changed my mindset. And I, I saw God in a whole new way. And that's when I learned the word zeal. And Romans 12, 11 says, never be lacking in zeal. Always have a spiritual favor. Serve in the Lord. And I said, that is going to be my life motto. I said, I'm going to serve you the best way I know how for the rest of my life. Mm. And so I said that when I was 12. And I said it again when I was um, 19 years old. And I said, I will do this for the rest of my life. And so um, going from there, I came back and I did not want to go to school. I said, I don't have to be qualified as a certificate to be a pastor. And um, I said, I don't need it. But then the Lord took me into this journey of like, it's still knowledge. It's still something I want to give you. And I was like, okay, Lord, uh, what does that look like for me? And so I worked at Christ Fellowship for a while as the elementary coordinator. And I was learning from different types of people. Knowing me is an amazing woman that has installed in me just the strength and also beauty of hard work. And also Nani's uh, beautiful love for her family of how she cares mm-hmm. for her daughters and how she uh, loves her husband so well. She, they both taught me different parts of how to be uh, a godly woman. And um, I honor that season of my life so much and they said go to school you need to go to school and I was like no I don't want to I don't like it (laughs) that's not for me I don't do well and then um one day I was on my way to Tampa because I'm I'm a little crazy as you can tell (laughs) um my friend's like do you want to chase the sun and I said let's do it so we woke up at 5 a.m. the sun rose from Jupiter and we went to watch the sun rise and we drove all the way to Tampa that night and we saw the sun (laughs) set and I drove there and I drove back in the same day and they were my friends were sleeping in the car and I was driving back and I was so tired my eyes were falling and I was just sometimes I was fighting with my friend just from different points of view of life and whatever else and and God's like be still and know that I am God. Like, I will give you the strength that you need, you know? And so I was driving and I finally made it home. And the next day I was like, well, I can't do it in my own strength, but God, can you give me the knowledge for it? And he's like, I want you to go to school. And I was like, okay. And so it was about the time that the semester was about to start. And the Lord says, let's start going to school. And so I applied to um, be a global education major. And God, like, just infused that knowledge is is power right and so it even says it in proverbs that it's um it's more beautiful than rubies it's it's more precious it's more it's more power to you when you know my word and when you know my spirit and so yes. throughout the course of when I was living in Honduras and meeting the teams there and and doing the same thing that I did in Bolivia but in a new atmosphere yes. um Danny one of the um staff members over there had instilled in me just knowledge of of loving the lord where i was at but also seeking him in new areas and so when i went into school i I went in with all the people that god surrounded me with and he said these are the people that are gonna help you and disciple you to be that woman of god that you're gone into and so um in this time that i transitioned from ministerial leadership to global education um 
I learned that I am in love with the academic portion of just the Bible, of like how it was written, where it comes from, like God's like presence when you read it, it's just like it's just like a wave. It's coming in and out and moving and and it's always like growing inside of you when you allow yes. it to. And so he took me through the season of yada. And so what yada is is uh, understanding. Uh, it's completely sorry. It's understanding and being known by mind and spirit. And so um, I went through the season of yada and understanding that. I can seek God in knowledge, I can seek God in heart, and I can seek God in spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to be connected through all. Um, And then because of all the missionary things that I've done, um, I'm the worst at saying no. So when people say, do you want (laughs) this food? I'm like, "Mm, yeah, like I'll take it. (laughs) Um, So I gained so much weight um, in the time because I would, in Asia, I rice in the in the morning at night and in the afternoon I would just eat rice all the time and just large portions so my weight gain was just over than more than I could imagine Mm -hmm. and then um in my season of yada I was like lord I, I, I'm starting to understand that I, I need to take care of my body like what does this look like for me Mm. And and he's like Imago Dei, which is Latin for image of God. Hmm. And so he's like, we're going to build up your temple now. And so from this last year, like, praise God, I was able to lose 35 pounds. And I'm wow. still on this journey. And I'm saying, God, every day I'm going to submit something new to you. I'm like, okay, if it's if it's sweets, it, like, let me give it to you. Because I want to be the best version of myself, not for yes. the people around me. It's not for the social media. It's not for the, the, the likes or the, hey, compliments that I get. It's how I feel like Mm. how can I serve you best because if I go into the mission field and I say I'm gonna help you uh, but I limit my capacity to uh, for me that that for me is not honoring the Lord and everybody has a different form of honoring the Lord and that's how you talk and I'm not gonna say like someone needs to go on a diet no it's not about a diet it's not about trying to lose the weight of here and now but it's like how can I honor God with what yes. I have, right? Yes. And so I was like, Imago Day is the thing that I'm going to be using for the rest of my life, but it's something that I'm in here and now. And, and going into Mexico and finishing my degree for my in- international teaching hours, like that is what I want to help my my girls to know that you are made in the image God, that you are made beautifully and wonderfully made in, in everything that he is. And it's not the physical body, but it's your spiritual body that is residing and, and filled in your heart. But it's, it's everything that God wants to do in you. And my story is, and, and, and I just don't want to leave it as like, okay, that's it. Like, that's my story. No, it's like, it's ever growing. It's ever moving. And, and there's parts that I didn't say, and it's not because I didn't want to say it. It's Mm. because I believe that God has an another point of time to share that part of my story. Or if someone says privately, I want to know what you went through with your family, or I want to know what you went through um, when you went through that depression or when someone lied to you or the relationships that I've had um, of a boyfriend when I was 16 and, uh, or I uh, being in my singleness now, Mm. you know, I'm single (laughs) (laughs) y'all, but um it's honoring God, and in, in, in the end of the day, what I want my story to be is the infusion of grace and love. It's That's what I want. It's the, the beautiful wave of life, you know. My story's still going. My story's still growing. Yes. Um, but it's like honoring and, and, and being here today mm. um, and being able to share my long-winded yes. story. <laughs> um, it, it's an honor, and it's a privilege to say, like, God— I I am honored that you use me every day of my life, that I'm able to sit here with you and love you wh- how I am. It's not, I, ha- I don't have to be like anybody else. He loves me for Juliana. He doesn't yes. love me for anything else. But yeah, yes. wow. that's my long-winded story. <laughs> wow, Julie, that's amazing. <laughs> wow, I'm like, you've li- you're 21 and you already <laughs> lived like, <laughs> ten lives. Ten lives. Right? I say that I have layers. <laughs> <laughs> Different chapters. Different a lot chapters. of chapters. Mm-hmm. Wow. 
That's amazing. Yeah. Julie, you um you stayed um you were talking about your connection with the church. Yeah. Um and I see how that has impacted yeah. uh, your life. And I would like you to share with the audience now, yeah. like if someone is watching now and they're not connected with the church, right? how can they go back? Like how can, because the benefit of mm -hmm. being in a community of believers is right. uh, uh, transforms your life, your entire mm -hmm. life and in, in changes your direction actually right. in your, your destination. Right. So how, uh, what would you say to someone that is uh, struggling with that? So for the church, uh, the first thing I want to say to whoever is listening, um, that I'm sorry and that the church is not here to hurt you. Um, and whoever has hurt you in that church, um, on behalf of them, I, I apologize. Uh, because what I don't want is the separation of people and, and, and church. And because in the end of the day, What church is, is a, is a body of believers that is coming together for a design purpose. Like, I sin, you sin, the mm. people in this world are full of sinners, yes. but we're just coming to a place of gathering. That's all it is. It's not like someone's trying to be superior than someone else, and if someone has put you down because of it, like, I'm sorry, because that's not God's promise for you it's not the body of uh of the bride that he's designed for you and where this church starts it's hmm. the church starts with you yes. it's like how are you composing yourself when you go into church because when you get hurt by someone in the church and you're like oh a pastor hurt me or they did something to me or they made me feel less than and in the end of the day you've dealt with that person you haven't dealt with god and hmm. so when you say God, use me the way that you want to use me. My church is how I use my temple. Remember, Imago Day. And mm. I'm like, how can I use my temple to honor you? And, and church starts at home. That zealous spirit that you want, it starts reading your Bible at home so that you can go into church and know what they're talking about when the pastor yes. says a scripture or when they say that Jesus went to Capernaum. Like, you have no idea what Capernaum is. Well, It's okay to research it because that is knowledge that God is giving you. Like use the church body, use the the building. And it's not to say like Christ Fellowship or any other named church or um, the regions around the world that are churches as well. Um, yes. It's not about the organization, but it's the part of what God wants to do. It's the bride. It's what he wants to instill in you and give you community because you are not going to find community in a club. You're not going to find community um, going from class to class to class to class or in your workspace. And yes, you might have a body of believers, but someone, it's something so special when you go into a room and everybody in that room is worshiping the Lord. Yes. It's like this fresh spirit, this fresh mm. wind that comes and, and it blows new air into you. And, yes. and sometimes you just don't want to leave. Yes. It's like something so spontaneous, something so beautiful. So if someone has ever hurt you in the church, um, I want to tell you, try again. Because once you start a sport, if you fail and you did not make that basket or you did not make that goal, it doesn't mean that you quit. You just means that you, you're going to try again and that yes. you're going to keep going. It's it, When you start a sport, you might not be good at it at first, um, but you like it and you're interested in it. And from that interest, you have to build upon it every day to be the person that you want to be. So if a soccer player, if you want to be like Messi, Messi didn't go from one, day one to being well-known. He went from a process of going through stages to be the person that he is today, yes. of this amazing soccer player. Right. But yes. Yeah. Wow, Julie. Julie, um, I've seen uh, throughout the story throughout the years how God has has built your faith. Yeah. Like um, that um, faith that is like you're not you, you're stepping you're taking a steps steps of faith mm -hmm. and then without knowing okay what's next yeah what's next just just believing mm -hmm. the the i love the the story of the the donuts <laughs> <laughs> i'll always Those remember stories. that yes and i i love how um god uses like the unknown for us yeah our humanity and our right. just um 
would limit it. Yeah. So, and then and then he shows up in an amazing way. Mm-hmm. So, what um, what has been, I've I seen that all throughout the years, as right. I mentioned before, is steps of faith. Yeah. And then uh, now you're like learning the word more yeah. and then teaching the word. You're going <laughs> to keep teaching the word. Yeah. Um, you're, a, you're right now like a teacher. Yes. So... That's your job right now, right? Yes, it's a substitute teacher. So, so you're teaching the kids, um, and that's that's amazing. <laughs> so how God has taught you, like, have um, prepared you throughout yeah. the years yeah. for a moment like this. Mm-hmm. And then now that you're going to Mexico. Yes. And <laughs> Mexico, and then yeah. you're just, um, is there any time during the, those, those moments, like, that you've right. been afraid Oof. of? So how, like, yeah. tell me about it. <laughs> tell me about it because oh, I know man. that, okay, I have to, I've taken this step of faith, yeah. but in your emotions, in your, what are you feeling? I mean, how do you, do you conquer that? Right. Um, I think I'm still con- trying to conquer it today. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is very, very, very difficult. Like what you see on Instagram and what you see in the online and what, you see when I walk into church and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to Mexico. But you don't see the parts that I am in my room looking at my clothes, looking at the house that I've built, that I own 75% of that house, that throughout the years that I've accumulated so much stuff and things that I appreciate and I have to sell them. There was one day that I was looking at all my clothes and I was distributing them out of what I wanted and what I did not want. And and there was items that I was holding on to from high school, like my ROTC pants that I, I fit in now and that I was so proud of when I put them wow. on. I was like, yes, Jesus, we made it. <laughs> um, and uh, I was putting them all to the side and I was like, following the Lord means surrendering it all. And I was sitting in my room and emotionally just distraught. I, I had... Like, I wasn't crying. I wasn't mad. I wasn't sad. I was just looking at everything. And the only thing that I, I could do is said, I couldn't. I can't. I can't do this. I can't give up everything that I have. And there's days that I'm like, yes, I got this. Like, this is the best day ever. Like, I'm going to be serving the Lord. And I can't wait to meet all my kids. But then, like, two hours later or even, like, 30 minutes later, I'm like, I can't do this. I'm like, how can I teach kids with disabilities or how can a disabled person that has dyslexia teach someone to read? How can Mm -hmm. I do that? And God is like, I will be your strength. I will show you and I will guide you and I will. And he's like, it's not going to be easy. Every day you're going to have a new challenge. And it's like the life of of Job. And and I'm not going to say that my life is just like Job in the Bible. If you have not read that story, it's in a phenomenal story of just faith and endurance and everything that God can do within a person that is faithful. Um, but it's it's the story of Job, right? That he he was still faithful throughout all circumstances. And so there are days that I wake up and I said, Lord, are you sure? Are you sure you want me to do this? <laughs> because even when I was in Asia, and, but raising money to go to Asia, I still had two weeks left and I had no money. And I said, Lord, I don't, I'm not going to go. I mean, you go in through this roller coaster of emotions of like, is this what you're calling me to? Are you sure, Lord? Because you don't hear this like, oh, like audible voice <laughs> coming from heaven, like light shines. And like, it, I mean, sometimes it does. And I have a story that has, but, um, Tell me about it. Yes. <laughs> um, so when I was ready to go to Asia. <laughs> yeah. um, so when I was ready to go to, I'm uh, not Asia, um, Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going through this season. And this is the part that if I cry, y'all, please forgive me. <laughs> uh, it's a very it's okay. it's subject okay. um, right now, especially. Um, but because I'm actually walking through it, it's like present day right now in my life um and I was and I'm gonna get (laughs) very vulnerable as you can tell I'm trying to prolong it but um I battle with feeling lonely and it's not the physical loneliness that because I'm physically pure or anything like that it's not like a sexual loneliness it's not that I need a man holding my hand no it was 
it was some type of spiritual loneliness that I've always had that has been the thorn in my side that keeps me coming close to God. And, um, and in some seasons, like it's much higher than others. And going into this season of my life, and when I say season, I don't mean like spring, summer, fall. I mean times that I've been learning. So I learn through a period of a season. So it could be like the season of high school that I was learning to grow up. I was learning to be dedicated to something. Or I could say a smaller season when I was that season that I was in Bolivia and learning um, how is is to serve people when they're not from your country or they're not from where you live or they look different than you or they act different than you or they were raised differently. That is a season. It's a point of learning. It's the point of understanding. Um, And in the season that I was entering into, um, this spiritual loneliness, like it started in June of this year, And it just hit like a wall. Like I just hit this brick wall. And I looked at my mom one day and I said, Mom, I can't do it anymore. I said, I need to go to a therapist and I need her right away. And it's not that I was feeling like I wanted to kill myself or if I wanted to uh, like end what I was doing. No, it was like I was just desperate of knowledge but of like guidance because beforehand when I was in ministerial leadership I was also studying psychology and going into my first semester of global education I was still in psychology classes so going into my therapy session I already knew the bullet points of what therapy is of like the techniques you need to do of course she gave me new techniques because she's a wonderful woman of God that has um, put so much faith into me and uh, has uh, allowed me to have someone that understands the mind of this person right here (laughs) um but uh yeah I just looked at my mom and I said I just need to talk to someone I am I'm just tired that's I am I'm tired I'm tired of fighting and feeling lonely and um it was this loneliness especially now that I am in the 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 time of my life that everyone and their mamas are getting married. <laughs> that everybody's getting engaged. Someone's having a new baby. You know, they're on their second child. And I'm like, over here. You're 21, Julie. I know. But once you're <laughs> yeah. consumed with all yes, your friends. Yes, with everyone. In a relationship. Yes, yes. I'm like, so Lord, <laughs> when is mine coming? Because I'm ready. Um, so I think. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> and so throughout my course of, you know, all my mission trips journeys, of course, I still have life. I'm still human. I still have relationships. Um, I had one official relationship and we lasted for almost two years and I, I love him to death. But um, the pro- the reason why we broke up, it was just because we were going into different stages of life. I started to travel way more often. And when I came back home, it wasn't fair for him for me to feel like I didn't want to be here and I wanted to be in another yes. country and him not understand why why um i wanted to also honor him because he's an amazing man that god has um placed an anointment upon him but i just saw us going into different directions and and he saw the same and so we we ended on great terms and we're still friends today so be friends with your exes if you can um if it's not (laughs) don't do it um i'm trying to give you advice when i don't know myself (laughs) anyways um yeah so after that of course like guys would pursue me and um and there was moments that god is like no that's not it and i would be like oh, okay you're right <laughs> like red flag that's what it is red flags like my my students tell me uh, miss gomez what is your red flag i said my red flag and i said if he doesn't know jesus and he says she got the assignment i said <laughs> Okay, I got what assignment? Like, he's like, no, Miss Gomez, it's a TikTok trend. I said, okay, cool. Oh wow! Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I just want someone that is fully consumed with the Lord and and okay with the process that I'm in, right? Of like following the Lord from one day to the next. And so in the season of loneliness, I was looking for someone, and then the the weight got less, but it was still there. It was, it was getting to a point that I was like, okay. I feel it, but it's not there as much. And then from one day to the next, it like sprung up. Like, I don't know what, just something that 
boomed. And I was just like, Lord, I feel like I can be in a crowded room and scream and no one listen to me. Mm. And I, I am known at the church. I know that. And someone says that, oh, Juliana, you're the golden child. I said, golden child? I said, who? Because it ain't me. <laughs> and he's like, no, you're the golden child. And I'm like, yeah, how am I the golden child but still feel alone? Mm. I said, I don't get it. And there was one day that in the church we were talking about um, – the Holy Spirit. And I normally sit by myself because I like to process things with the Lord. And if the Lord tells me to go pray for someone, I'll go pray for them. And um, I'm just very sporadic, <laughs> mm. let's say. And so <laughs> if I take someone with me, they need to keep up. <laughs> um, and so I was sitting by myself and and we were talking about the Holy Spirit, and I normally go to the American service in the morning and then Pastor Daniel's service, the CFE service at night. And they had similar messages because they were both based on the Holy Spirit. And then uh, from one point to another, Pastor Daniel starts to pray, and he says, uh, we're going to pray about loneliness. And I just couldn't contain my tears, and I just started crying. I said, Lord, like, what is this that I'm feeling? Why am I feeling the way that I'm feeling? Like, every morning, I surrender every part of my life to you. I I tell you, God, take this away from me, but yet you won't. And and I want to know why. Why are you letting me be consumed by this? And um, I hear the Lord say to me, get up and go to the altar. And I said, no, I am not going to the altar. That is a show. And I do not like a show. And I was like, I don't want to be that person that comes to the altar and cries and so that people can see them. And I'm like, I've been to the altar when I surrendered my life. I, I've done it. I've checked it. I got this. And so um, there's a word for me that is like immediate. And it's the word now. Because when I, my, the love of my life, that is my dog, Coda, uh, when I tell him now is he does it immediately and when I tell him go to bed and he doesn't go to bed and I say go to bed now he always goes and so um the Lord says get up and go to the altar now wow and I so I heard now and I said okay I'm gonna go and so I started walking to um the like the altar and I got on my knees and I was just crying. And I was just like, Lord, just take it away. That's the only thing I could say was, Lord, just take it away. Take it away. I don't want it anymore. Like, I surrender it to you. I don't want to hold anything back. Like, please, Lord, get, I give it to you. And um, then I look up and I see Paola and I see uh, Pastor Arturo, like, worshiping. And they sing this beautiful melody that I still don't even remember, but I heard it. And they went into their knees and it felt like they were joining me in in the state that I was in and I was just looking at them in just awe of like how God aligns like our stories together and then after the service I got up and I I was praying from a distance for other people because I was like Lord you know my heart and I don't want to be like clashing symbols of just saying the same thing again when you already know um and so I started praying for other people from a distance. So I would look at someone and pray for them. And then after service, we were dismissed. And I was walking out and I said, I just I just want to be alone. That's all I want to be. And then the Lord's like, go talk to Pastor Daniel. And I couldn't keep that like mind from doing it. And so I was like, okay, let's go. So I walked to Pastor Daniel and I asked him, I said, how do you deal with loneliness? How do you walk through that? And um, he, he did the best that he could because in the end of the day, I can't feel what you're feeling Mm. and you can't feel what I'm feeling. And so he would give, he gave me what he knew and it's the best recipe that anybody could ever ask for, but it's the same recipe that everybody in my entire life has given me. You're 21 years old. You are beautiful. The guy that, um, that is being made for you, God is preparing him for you. He has to be anointed for you. Like this is the list that I have written down that I've memorized every night. That it's the thing that when I go to bed and I, and I cry to the Lord and I ask him, Lord, I know that he's being prepared for me, but why do I feel like this? Why am I in the state that I'm in right now? And, um, and he did the best that he could. And, and we talked about psychology, you know, it could be, um, the distance of a father or figure or anything like that. And, um, I was like, yeah, yes. Thank you, pastor. Like that was really good. And, and it was good. It was fruitful. And it was, it was 
uh, beautiful, but it was not what I needed at that time. Mm. And so when I walked out, I was like, oh, okay, cool. And um, I saw Julian and Samira. And normally uh, I see them at church and we're always busy. And so we always say hi. And then throughout the week we would call each other or we would talk or wow. we would get dinner one day or whatever it is. And so that day they looked at me and they said, the Lord told us to wait for you. I said, wait for me? And I was like, okay, sure. Like, what, what are you, what's going on? She's like, well, no, we want to know what's up with you. And I said, oh, um, so I told them, I said, I'm, I'm dealing with loneliness. That is just, it's all consuming me. And they're like, well, we just want to listen. And I was like, you want to listen to me? Are you sure? Uh. <laughs> As you can tell, I can talk forever. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and so uh, Samira say, yes. wow. just looks at me and she's like, yeah, I just want to listen to you. And she gives me a hug, the hug that I needed at that moment. She just embraces me and she gives me this like motherly hug that I just, at, at that time I was like, I like fell into her arms like it was just something so peaceful and we kept talking and then the conversation dies but we keep going and I was telling her of just like the past things that we used to do you know we used to evangelize across the street and all these different stuff around our community of West Palm and um and then we started talking about the orphanage and she says uh, yeah, we try to teach the kids different things. And then Julian's like, yeah, I get frustrated with some of them. And, you know, he always makes me laugh. And um, I was like, oh, you should do this with them or give them these tips because it's what I learned. And then I was like, that would be so cool if we can go. And then he's like, just bring Coda. I said, bring Coda? So I have like this checklist of if I can leave the States is if I can take my dog and if I can finish my school. And then he's like, check, check, let's do it. And I was like, Lord, are you sure? So and that so, was the same day that we're mm -hmm. same day, same, same conversation, same conversation. And oh he's gosh. like, and I want to tell you, uh, Julian says to me, um, so we saw you at the altar and we knew we needed to wait for you. It was because we were waiting for school supplies at the altar from someone. And so God did in a divine appointment for me to go to the altar now was because my appointment was now and I had to be obedient in that moment so that Julian and Samira could see me to give me the recipe for my next trip and so when I was talking to them and they were saying to me like this is what we needed to do and I was like well let's pray about it you know we can't go from one day to the next I still have school I work full time I you know I have so much things piling on I have a house you know and I own part of the house and it's not while I'm running it with my roommates and I don't want to leave them hanging. I still have a couple months left. So I had so many things going on and I'm like juggling it all. And then I get into my car. Like I said before, I don't like to cry in front of people. So I got in my car and I just started bawling. I said, Lord, is this really what you want me to do? <laughs> and I was like, uh, do you want me to go to Mexico? Are you sure? Because once I started talking about Mexico and I saw the, uh, the picture of the kids, like, It, it was peace. It's just like, that's the thing that I was missing. It wasn't like my heart was missing a piece, but it was the fact that God added something new to it. It was a new, um, like, etapa the, the, of my life. It mm. was like a new season that he's like, this is the key. This is what is going to fill you up a little bit because mm. there's something else that you're missing. And so I'm like, okay. Um, so I was in my car, you know, crying, and I was driving, and, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, because I'm, I am very doubtful, even though you see me in a lot of faith and you're like going all to all these countries, I'm still very, very doubtful. I'm like, Peter, I'm like, if you are God, you need to let me walk me on peace. water. And I am just like him. Um, if I relate to someone that's like him, I don't cut people's ears off, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, um, yeah, that's Peter, right? That cuts the ear off. Anyways, you can edit that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I was so doubtful. I was like, Lord, I, I don't, this is so spontaneous. It's one day to the next. Like, it's minutes and hours that it was moving. And um, I said, Lord, and I see this thunderstorm, and I'm late to meet someone because I was going to go study with her for school. And it's my best friend, Jersey. And um, there was a thunderstorm and near the City Place area, and I was on 95 on Southern going towards City Place, and I was striving, and um, I was like, oh, it's a small thunderstorm, and I see some lightning, and I said, Lord, 
if you really want me to go to to Mexico and move there and take Coda and take everything and just go in faith and I need you to light up the entire sky. I said not one corner of the sky ha- it has to be completely lit. Like if someone put like just like a flashlight, there's just like this boom of light. And so I just kept praying and then nothing, nothing happened. I was just driving and I was getting towards almost the 95, like getting onto it to get off of Southern and whatever else. And then boom, the entire sky lights up like a flashlight. And I look up and I said, <laughs> okay, okay. I said, <laughs> and I started like crying. I said, oh I'm moving gosh. to Mexico. And I just, uh, it was to the point that I felt like a five-year-old crying because I couldn't catch my breath. I was like, <laughs> oh I couldn't gosh. stop crying. And I was like, I know that you are calling me to go. And so I got into um, uh, that like that space that I was with my friend to study. And, and she's like, you're late. And I said, I know I'm always late. (laughs) And she's like, yeah, I know. And she was with her boyfriend and he was working too. And, um, I started to tell her, I said, uh, Jersey, I think God is leading me to move to Mexico. And she goes, no, (laughs) she goes, no, no, no. And because she's like, I don't want you to leave again. Like, don't leave again. And she's like, you have so much here. And then we kept talking about it. And she's like, you know what? Yeah this is what you're meant to do. I believe that God is calling you to go. And so she was my first yes of going to Mexico. And I was like, okay, now that I have my first yes, I'm still so doubtful. I mean, the sky lit up and I'm still like, one more. I was like, I just one more. Um, I'm like, I literally had a miracle flash before me, but yet I'm like, this is not it. That That's not it. It can't be from God. Um, <laughs> um, and so after that night, Um, I spoke to my roommates and I said, I think the Lord is leading me to move to Mexico. And they're like, go for it. I I believe that God is calling you to go. And I was like, that's my second yes. (laughs) And then I was like, my ultimate yes is my mom. If my mom says yes, I know that I'm going. And normally my mom is like, let's think about it. Let's process it. When it's much more of a longer trip, when it's a one week trip, she's like, go. I want you to go. You're going to have so much fun. God is going to lead you. But you're going into a season of like, you're out of control, you know, of like, my mom can't help me if I'm in Mexico, if I'm sick or anything like that. So she's losing all control over my life. And it's not to say that she's overpowering, but she's a mom, you know, she comes to my house when I had COVID and she would leave, you know, things on my doorstep and be like, Hey, I'm praying for you. Or she would bring me flowers. And Mm -hmm. now she is giving up that for me to go on a mission trip. And so I'm like, if my mom says yes, you know, um, I know that this is what I'm supposed to do. So I texted my mom and that uh, week beforehand, I wasn't able to see her because some things has happened with work and I wasn't able to, you know, visit her. And I normally do like once a week or twice. Um, we get coffee or something. And I texted her in the morning. I said, hey, good morning. Like, are you available to meet today? And she texts me right at 6 a.m. She's like, yeah, whenever you want. And I said, oh, I said, I'm available at three or just because out of faith. I said, or now. And she's like, now is good. I said, okay. And I literally put on my dress and I <laughs> left and I drove to my mom's house and I sat there and my mom comes in like in her pajamas, her hair is a mess. She just <laughs> rolled out of bed. Sorry, mom, I'm spoiling it. Um, and she sits in my car and I said, okay, mom, uh, before I talk to you, let's pray because right. We, I prayed before Asia and I prayed for before all my mission trips and I pray before this one. I said, okay, Heavenly Father, I pray that you speak through me and that um, my mom would have the wisdom to lead me because I'm still filled with doubt. I'm still filled with anxiousness or if this is what I'm supposed to do because it's a giant step that I don't know of. Um, But Father, I pray that you give her wisdom that whatever she needs to say, let her say it. And so after we closed in prayer, I started telling her, you know that I deal with loneliness. And I started telling her about the kids in Mexico. And then I said, Mom, I believe God is leading me to move to Mexico. I didn't say that I was moving to Mexico. I didn't say, I said, God is leading me because it could change any direction, right? I don't want Mm. to make a course of my life move towards the direction that I want to go in, but what the Lord wants me to go in. So when I said, um, the Lord is leading me to move to Mexico, the first thing she says to me is, okay, how can I get you there? How can I help you to get you there? I was like, 
are you saying yes? Like, I still needed clarity after that. <laughs> and she goes, yes, I'm saying yes. And wow. we both start bawling. And, and she was my ultimate yes. And then from there, I said, God, I need you to everything that I do today. I need it to all be yeses. And so... Um, I was late to work because I was talking to my mom and I'm always late and <laughs> um, it's not a quality that I appreciate, but sometimes um, I was even late today for like nine minutes. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and I think even in those times that God moves, but I went into this um, like, uh, what's it called? Gas station because I need mm-hmm. to get gas and I get out of my car and before prior I was getting my hair dyed on Wednesday and I turned orange like it was just the worst hairstyle that I've ever had (laughs) so we had to fix it um and so we fixed it on Saturday and I got to meet this wonderful woman that she is battling breast cancer and I was able to talk to her about Jesus and how he loves her so much and then the following week is when I mean yeah the following week is when I got the divine appointment of going to Mexico and and then when I was leaving and going to the gas station, the card wasn't working and I was trying to get everything done and I would go to the store and ask the manager, but the manager wasn't there, so nothing happened and so I had to move my car. But when I was coming back, I look and I was like, is that you? And I said her name and and she's like, hi. And I said, hi, are you the lady from the hair salon? And she goes, yeah. And she's like, I'm actually going to one of my appointments right now. And I was like, oh, I just wanted to let you know that I've actually been praying for you. And she's like, you've been praying for me? I said, yeah, and I'm still praying for you. And so if she ever hears this, I'm still praying for you more than anything in the world. Um, and and she just gave me that second yes, you know, the, the yes that I would never expect because mm-hmm. I met this woman in Jupiter and I live in, in Palm Beach Gardens and it was at 7 a.m., at the same um, gas station, at that same moment that I my card wasn't working. Because sometimes if it doesn't work, there's something that God is trying to do. Mm. And so he did it all so that I would meet that woman so that he would give me my fourth yes. And wow. so after that, every person that I told, it was like, yes, yes, this is what you're meant to do. This is what you're meant to do. But I, I would tell you this, that I still struggle even to this day of like, am I meant to go? Like, even if the Mm. yeses are all consuming and and beautiful and amazing, um, I'm still like, I'm still human. I'm still doubtful. I'm like, am I even equipped for this? Like, I know, Lord, that I'm 21 years old and I'm so young um, and I've been through a lot, but I, am I able, am I able Mm. to do this? And in the end of the day, God is our strength. God is our power. That that when we receive Jesus, He says, "I will give you everything that mm. you need." And so, um, it, and through this week, and like that loneliness hasn't left. I'm still battling it to this day. And um, I know it's from past hurts of falling in love with the man that I shouldn't have fallen in love with because there were so many red flags. But um, I never meant to fall in love with him, but I ended up falling in love with him. And um, he broke my heart in different ways. And I, I see myself like trying to pick up the pieces and giving it to God and saying, God, I don't I don't need it. Um but the reason why I'm, I'm single and, and, you know, I make jokes and that I, I want to be single and this and that and whatever. And it's because I'm so afraid to love again. And mm. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I you know, understand. Um, one of my friends uh, looks at me and he says, I said, my love right now is like a microwavable love. You know, I can love you right now in an intense way. I can see you where you are, but it's not long term. Like it's not because I'm one place to the next. I am moving all the time. And for me to love, I have to get outside of my comfort zone. And so the first person that you should be in awe with is the Lord. That's out of anything. And then I'm like, okay, Lord, my assignment is to go to Mexico. And if I'm willing to change my assignment for someone, then then that's not good. You know, I'm putting my needs before the the needs that you wanted me to assign mm-hmm. and accomplish. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I can't tell you that I have the perfect recipe for you to pass this or uh, for me to say that, oh, yeah, 
been there, done that. No, I, I'm walking through it every day of my life, and, and I know that I will be walking through it every day of my life. And, and when yes. I meet the man of my dreams, the one that I've been praying for, <laughs> the one that I've been longing for, um, every day is a, it's a new challenge. It's a, a new battle that you face, but it's saying, are you going to put your thoughts and your opinions aside and give it all to God in the end of the day? You know? Yes. But, yeah. Wow, Holy. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's amazing. All everything that you've mentioned today is like amazing and it's so encouraging and Thank you. that to keep going and just take one day at a time mm -hmm. with faith. Yeah. And and then um thank you so much for for being here. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your heart with Anyone that is going to listen to it. <laughs> the whole two hours and something minutes, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> But thank you. It's so um, amazing. Um, and what you mentioned about loneliness, I think uh, many, I mean, I mean, it's amazing how the young people are right. experiencing that. And I, even, even when you're saying that, uh, even when you're married, when you have kids, when mm -hmm. you have many people, it's the same. It's a feeling that, uh, I mean, of course, it doesn't come from God, but right. it's a feeling that we have to conquer like, right. every day, every day. Mm -hmm. um, and I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. That, uh, and also when the, someone broke your heart, yeah. I, it's saying, I went through the same thing, <laughs> <laughs> but you'll get over <laughs> We'll make it over. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, it's, yeah. it's like, it's, those are seasons, as you mentioned, yeah. seasons that uh, you just need to go through and then you mm -hmm. just learn and just, when God shows you the person that is for you, mm -hmm. just, okay. Okay. And there's peace. There's a way. <laughs> <laughs> All that for this. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Lord. So, um, so it's, 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 that's life. That's yeah. life. And you're learning it. You're 21 and you right. have learned many <laughs> lessons already yeah. and and you're very mature for Thank your you. age Thank and you. I'm thankful for that. Thank you very so, much. So anything that you want to add to this conversation? Mm. Anything that you want to add? I think my last and final thing is that um, following, following the Lord is not easy. Um, it comes with a lot of challenges. It, it's about um, being selfless. Um, and putting up other people's needs before your own. And, and if you're watching this and you watch the entire thing, God bless you. But um, <laughs> it's to say that it comes with trials, but in the end of the day, it's so fruitful. God is going to yes. move in such a magnificent way if you allow him to. Um, it just takes that one yes to change the course of your life. Yes. Holy, for people that are watching right now and they um, they don't know Jesus. Yeah. Um, do you want to pray for them um, yeah. right now? And that they don't, they want that, that you have. that Because mm -hmm. you have the peace, peace of God. And right. you are doing things like afraid. And they, there's, in the audience, I'm sure that there's someone like mm -hmm. with that doubt. And uh, because... God calls, and then we are the ones who, okay, uh, yeah. say yes to that call or no. Mm -hmm. So can we pray for those people that yeah. first they want uh, to know the Jesus that you know? Yeah. And then people that are have that, like, doubt about taking the a step of faith. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, definitely. Okay. So Thank if you, you would pray with me. Um, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for um, just this time that we've had to glorify um, you in my story that um, you have assigned to me, Lord. Yes. Um, Lord, I pray that I did um, you justice in a way that I was honoring to you. But Lord, I pray for that person that is um, just trying to seek you in this very moment, Lord, yes. that is um, trying to test out the waters and seeing if it's you in the wilderness, if it's you um, in those hard times that they might be going through, um, a very hard season in their life. Yes. Uh, maybe it's the death of a family member or if it's, um, you know, just walking through COVID or losing, um, a job or 
whatever it is, Lord, or this got a diagnosis, um, you are the God that heals. You are the God that sees. You are the God that provides. You are the God that brings peace. You are Jehovah Shalom. And so, Lord, I just pray that that person that is trying to persevere through the life, that she, she or he is feeling like they're running on quicksand, Lord, that you would help them and you would Fill their tiredness, Lord, that they would be able to decompress in you, Lord. And Father God, I just pray an anointment uh, from head to toe that you would fill them with your spirit, that in this time that they would they would be all consumed by your presence in whatever the room that they're in, Lord, that they're in their cards and that in their car in this presence that you have given to them. But Holy Spirit, I pray that you bring the fragrance, a peace that is like a blanket yes. that lays upon them, Lord. I pray that they would submit their heart's broken heart to you, the pieces that they have strayed away from, the pieces that they don't want to acknowledge anymore. Lord, I pray that they see you in a new way, Lord. Yes. Father, I pray that um, you come in like a rushing wind, that they may feel your presence. Those goosebumps aren't for just for an aha moment it's just for a lifestyle that is going to be changed for your spirit. But Lord, I know that there are some people on this podcast, there's people that I've been watching and persistent in me talking, but Lord, um, I know that you're calling them to do something. Yes. You have whispered in their ear in a magnificent way that only yes, you can. And Father, I pray that they take that step. It doesn't have to look like mine. It doesn't have to look like Veronica's. It can look like theirs. Yes, and yes, you yes. have um, made them fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. And yes, they are a part of the body that it doesn't matter if you're the yes, ear or the mouthpiece, Lord. We are all connected into yes, yes. one body. And I pray that they take it full force if they are the feet that they would walk in the steps of your kingdom lord and that they would build yes. um new lives that vision that they've seen and that they've written down in their notebooks lord let it come to pass in the footsteps that you've had planted for them Thank lord you, father i pray that you give them the knowledge that um they would understand that mind and spirit come together um to make them whole again lord we yes. can't have one we can't have the other we have a perfect balance of who you are, Lord. And Thank so, you, Lord, Jesus. I pray for our broken hearts, our minds that are overwhelmed, our spirits that are dry. I pray that you bring these bones back to life, that you would transcend, that you would move, that you would be an all-powerful God that moves in this moment. Any sickness, any um, disease that is in our bodies. For Father, even for the people that are struggling with a new diagnosis of Bell's palsy or if it's... Yes. Um, any type of skin cancer, anything that is moving in their body right now, Lord, yes. I pray that it leaves in the name of Jesus. Amen. If they're Jesus. battling yes. COVID, Father, if COVID would flee in the name of Jesus, Amen. that if they have no smell, Father, that they would be able to f- smell fresh air today, yes, Lord. Lord, that your fragrance would fall upon this moment right now, Lord, that your presence is ever growing, it's ever seeing, Lord, that we would be a flower that blooms so beautifully for your kingdom you, lord Jesus. that we would be able to make disciples of all nations that our hearts men would be out of rock and into flesh lord and Thank not you, the Jesus. flesh of our bodies but the flesh of you lord the one that you have done to die on the cross that gave everything up for love for us for that moment um so lord i pray a unity and love um that we can feel. It's not about the knowledge that we can have, but it's what we can feel, Father. I pray for that person that is doubtful that they would surrender their life to you because it it goes farther. We want to fear you, not in a scared way, but in a full way, in an honoring way, in a way that we love you so dearly. So, Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for moving in our hearts. Um, And thank you for just opening up new doors uh, for the next season, the next chapter ahead. So we love you too, Jesus, and we pray this all in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Thank you again. And Julie, if someone wants to donate towards your trip, how how do they do that? this is the part that I don't like <laughs> um, because for me, it's definitely more of, I want to partner with you in prayer. Yes. Um, but definitely if you do want if someone to, wants if to. you want to reach out and 
help in donations because what I'm really fundraising for is for the kids in their schooling or um, materials for me to learn to teach them properly or the new tools that I'm going to give them. Yes. Um, there is a GoFundMe that um, you can have that okay. I will help you get to or whatever. Or um, you can also DM me on Instagram or Facebook and my at is at J-U-L-L-Y-S 1990 <laughs> and I say it like that I'll because in the in the comments yeah, down here. comments below <laughs> below comments below <laughs> um, so you can follow me on Instagram Juliana Gomez on Facebook and you'll see updates of my kids or the things that I'm doing if you want to DM me I'll be more than happy to answer any of your other questions if you got this far <laughs> yes <laughs> okay so thank you so much if, thank you everyone for being here mm -hmm. thank you everyone to, uh, for listening to this podcast and please share uh, with everyone that you can and comment and like and, and just <laughs> subscribe um, subscribe <laughs> to the channel so I'll see you next time bye, bye.